All right, welcome everybody back to our integers and rational numbers unit. And today we're gonna to be talking about adding integers. So we talked about what integers are, right? Numbers that just don't have any fractional component, right? Positive, negative, zero, anything with nothing after the decimal is an integer. And today we're gonna to learn how to add them. We're gonna use two different models. We're going to add integers on a number line and we're gonna use these things called integer chips. So let's get started. All right, so with adding integers, I'm gonna give you a really simple example, a kindergarten example, one plus three, just to show you how we add integers using a number line. Well, if we have a problem like this, one plus three, the starting number is always our starting point. This is always where we start with an addition problem. We start at the number one. So I'm going to place a dot here at number one. And then how do I do plus three? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up the number line three spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And that means that our answer would be four. And you can do this on the horizontal number line, or you can do it obviously on the vertical number line over here. I can put a one here and then move up one, two, three units like that. And my answer is still positive four. So that's doing it with a kindergarten example. But of course, we can also do it with positive and negative integers, which is when we get into the middle school stuff. So for example, negative one plus four. All right, uh, I'm going to place my starting point at negative one. So let's say we're down here at negative one, and then I'm going to add four to it. So I'm going to go plus four up the number line four spaces. One, two, three, four. And the answer here is three. Okay, well, let's think about why that might be. Well, if you're $1 in debt, you owe somebody a dollar, and you find four bucks on the ground, you add four bucks to your wallet. Well, you can pay off the dollar and still keep three. So now you're up three. And that's how that works. And of course, we can do this on the horizontal number line or the vertical number line. So the next one I'm going to do actually on the vertical number line. So we're starting at four. So you got four bucks. Fantastic. Then, uh, unfortunately, you must add a debt to your life. You've got to borrow seven dollars from somebody. So that means your money is going to go down by seven. When we add a negative number, we actually go down because it's having the opposite effect of adding a positive number because positive and negative numbers are opposites, which we'll get to a little bit more in the next slide. So we go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and our answer will be negative three. And notice I'm very careful that that negative sign, I don't want it to be in the equal sign because I want Mr. Haynes to be able to see that the answer is negative three, right? That negative symbol is important. This answer over here, three is a totally different number. Okay, so let's look at the, our last example, um, negative two minus one. Um, so we're gonna start at negative two and then we're going to add another dollar of debt. So we already owe $2, now we go down one more so our answer is actually negative three. And of course, this would be true if I did it on the vertical number line as well, starting at negative two, add a negative one, meaning going down one, and our answer would be negative three. All right, so that's how you use the number line to answer integer problems. But there's another way. And in order to do that, I need to introduce a little bit of vocabulary. So opposites are two numbers that are the same distance away from zero. They have the same absolute value. This is one of my favorite pieces of math vocab because it makes so much sense to everybody. Well, what's, what's some examples of opposites? Four and negative four, right? Four and negative four are the same distance away from zero, right? Four units away. So they have the same absolute value. Negative 28 and 28, same absolute value. The reason I bring this up is they have opposite effects. So if you add opposites, you create zero pairs. What that means is a pair of numbers that adds to zero. So if we take the example from the last slide, four and negative four, if I add four and negative four together, what do I get? Well, I start at four and then 
I go down one, two, three, four, I get zero. So if I do four plus negative four, I get zero. This is known as a zero pair. The reason that I mention this is it's really helpful when you're adding positive and negative numbers to know when things will add you back to zero, right? Zero is the starting point for addition. Everything starts from zero in addition and subtraction. So knowing when things get back to zero is very helpful. It makes the problem a lot simpler. So let's look at our second way of adding integers, which is with these yellow and red chips that you can see here. I might slide myself down here. Uh, these yellow and red chips, we call them integer chips. And the yellow plus means a positive one and the red minus means a negative one. So how do these work? Well, if I'm adding, for example, negative one plus four, and I'm going to use uh, colors here because the colors are helpful and the actual integer chips that we have in the classroom are yellow and red. But um, on your work, if you just have a pencil, what you can do is you can draw and write a minus for the negative chips, like negative one there. And then if I'm going to add four positive chips, I would do four circles and put a plus in each of them. Okay. And remember, these are the exact same problems that we did on the number line. So you should hopefully remember what the answers are. Um, so if I look at this, I've got a red negative one and I've got a yellow positive one. Well, what happens when we add these pairs together? We get zero. And what that means is there's going to be no effect there. The positive and the negative balance each other out. So my answer is going to be the three remaining positive ch uh, chips. And so my answer is the number three. So we basically just compare positive and negative chips and figure out what's left over. So for our next one, I have four positive chips. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna put a little plus in each of them. And I have seven negative chips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And because I'm using the negative and positive sign, I could do this entirely using black ink or a pencil or whatever, and you would still be able to see it. Well, do we have any zero pairs here? Well, yes, we do. We have a zero pair here. Those add to zero. The next ones add to zero. The ones after that add to zero. The ones after that add to zero. And what is uh, our final answer here? Well, we have negative three left over, right? After we've created the zero pairs. So our answer here is negative three. Ooh, let me uh, write that a little bit better. Negative three. And I'm going to circle that. There we go. Well, what happens if, for example, this last problem, negative two plus negative one? Well, I have negative two and then a negative one. Oh, that's easy. It's just negative three, right? Two dollars of debt plus another dollar of debt. That's three dollars of debt. So there we go. Our answer is negative three. So hopefully you remember that we got the exact same answers using the number line and using the integer chips. With integer chips, the goal is to find those zero pairs and then see what's left over. With the number line, it's just positive numbers you add, you move up the number line, right? Negative numbers you add, you move down the number line. All right, good luck.